name's Jim Garrison. I'm the archivist for the Humboldt County Historical Society. Uh, we've been trying to put this together for a while now. Every first Saturday of every month in Eureka, some of you might know, we put on a presentation at the library. And so I sort of wanted to reach out to Southern Humboldt and give them an opportunity to not have to drive to Eureka to see us do this. Um, <laughs> Although I came from Eureka down here to see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, I wanted to thank Stephanie Stefano Davis for helping us make this happen and providing a space here at the school. I also wanted to thank uh, Carrie Varner for letting us use this room before she even gets to. Our speaker today is Sean Mitchell. Uh, he currently is a teacher at Eureka High School and he is extremely knowledgeable about the Northwestern Pacific Railroad. Um, I'd say he's without peer in that, in that regard. Uh, he's going to tell us some great stuff today. I've heard the presentation before and seen it come along from the very beginning and uh, it's great stuff. So without further ado, Sean Mitchell. Okay, thanks everybody. Let me uh, pull the PowerPoint up here. Excellent. Okay, thank you for that introduction, Jim. So, uh, yes, my name is Sean Mitchell. Um, this presentation um, has been a very, very long time coming. Um, I moved up to Humboldt County in 2009, and basically from the beginning, uh, being from the Bay Area, I saw a railroad that was in complete disrepair. And really, it just got me thinking, what happened? Um, and I had no idea the story was so in-depth and it had so much drama to it. So um, just really quick before we start, uh, the title Fire in the Mountain, um, I had two different uh, parts of my article that were published in the Humboldt County Historical Society's uh, publication, The Humboldt Historian. Um, Suzanne Forsyth, who helped me edit it, was just amazing. Um, so I titled it The Fire in the Mountain, The Beginning of the End for the Northwestern Pacific Railroad. Um, and I just put this down here. Since I last did this presentation, um, I've actually started this Facebook page called North Coast Railroad History. And I sort of just did it because I wanted people to see some of the pictures that we had. But what I did not anticipate is the fact that I've had former employees actually reach out to me on this site. And they've been sharing pictures that have previously not been seen by anyone but probably their <coughs> friends. Um, so pretty amazing. And uh, in the background here, it's sort of obscured by the text. That is Island Mountain. Um, I went there in 2015, and um, yeah, you're going to hear all about it today. <laughs> so, uh, just a little bit of a thank you. There's a long list here. Humboldt County Historical Society, uh, Humboldt State University, back when I wrote this originally for my history degree, uh, for my thesis paper, uh, the Humboldt Room is just amazing. They have so many amazing pictures in there. Uh, there's a site called trainorders.com, Northwest Pacific Railroad Network, and then there's a large group of Facebook groups. Uh, former employees getting together and sharing things. I never thought that the social media thing would be so amazing for history also. And then there's a lot of other people who have helped me get here. Uh, my buddies Josh Buck and James Broadus, um, they help run the site with me. And um, to some of these um, some of these photos that I don't have credit to, um, I found them online and I've been searching and trying to find who took them and especially when it comes to NWP, some of the photographers, it's a little obscure and I can't find who they were. So all the credit to those people, especially those who have pictures of trains actually running because I wasn't alive yet. So without further ado. Um, so why Island Mountain? Uh, I love this picture. This is during the steam era. Um, this is the first Island Mountain Bridge. And uh, one of the reasons why I focus on Island Mountain is because I really think that it was sort of like the ground zero for um, this whole event happening, the reason why the railroad eventually shut down. Um, here's a picture of Island Mountain. This is the, the newer bridge. That's the old bridge. Uh, this newer bridge, this was actually taken by Dan Hauser in 1997. Uh, Dan Hauser is a good friend of mine. We sit on the Timber Heritage Board together with my buddy David Young over here. Um, Dan was the executive director of the railroad. And I just think that this picture is so amazing because you can see the tunnel 
and the bridge kind of basking in the twilight. And I think in 1997, they didn't realize that the railroad was also in its own twilight. Um, one year later, we saw the last train run through the canyon in February of 1998. Um, this was actually taken um, from helicopter. Uh, we were about, I want to say probably 50 feet up in the air. That's the 11 car train. It's still there. Um, the last train that ever rolled through the canyon never made it to Willits. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, this is the actual Island Mountain Bridge itself from the side. You can see it's got the low uh, section here, and then there's uh, two spans going over the Eel River. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, it's one of those sections that I, I think it's actually, it's kind of sad that more people don't get to see it, but it's so deep in the canyon that it's pretty much impossible for anyone who doesn't have the gate keys or a helicopter, or in the old days, it was the train to get there. So. Um, this is actually the north portal. Um, this is the north portal of the bridge, and you can actually, or of the tunnel, sorry, you can actually see, uh, see that little bend in the top of it? It's because the portal's cracked. Um, the, the mountain is actually squeezing that portal. Um, so this is the north end. Um, we were doing, I would say, about 90 miles an hour when I took this picture, which is why it's a little blurry. Um, and I was just really lucky. I, I, pub, I got this thing published in the Historical Society, and I had to bring it with me because I was able to stand on the actual bridge. So just to prove that it was actually there. Is. So um, why Island Mountain? I think it's fitting that we're in Redway because it is roughly 30 miles east of this area. Um, as a crow flies, it's pretty quick to get there. And when we left Island Mountain, we refueled at the airport locally, and it was fast, but it would take a very long time to get there by road. Um, so it was mile point 194 of 305, uh, convention for Southern Pacific, the mileposts count from 1st Market Street, San Francisco, because that was Southern Pacific headquarters. They don't actually cross the bay, but that's just convention. Um, so it's 55 railroad miles north of Willits and 61 railroad miles south of Scotia. Um, it is really in the heart of the uh, rugged Eel River Canyon. And the other thing uh, that I think it's really important to know is that in the old days, uh, when they would meet at Island Mountain, especially in the 90s, because this is the reason why one of the trains got stuck there, uh, northbound crews would meet at Island Mountain, southbound crews would meet at Island Mountain. So they would come together, and then the crews say if they were coming from Eureka, they could go to Island Mountain, swap trains, and end up at home. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it was sort of an important part of the railroad. Um, I want to give you just a sense, if you have never been to Island Mountain, just how far out it actually is. This is a, uh, an image from Google Earth. It's a little distorted, and I've checked again. Something about the way the satellite took it. It's a little distorted. It is actually straight going through there. Um, we turn that light on. Um, <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> yeah, it could be on an automatic sensor type thing. Oh, okay. All right. So um, this is the. Uh, Nope. So the um, the actual terrain view shows just how rugged the actual Island Mountain site is. Um, that little marker right there is the mouth of the portal. Now, if you look at the um, the actual geology of this uh, mountain, it's intimidating. And when we were flying around uh, from the North Portal, which is uh, it's about right here, when we were flying around, um, it's absolutely amazing just how sheer the actual cliffs are. And I think that's a really good time for me to transition really quick and show you something. Is that the Eel River there? It is, yep. This is the middle fork of the Eel. Um, you're not going to be able to really hear this, but I just want you to get an idea of what this looks like from the air. Mm -hmm. Up close and personal. <laughs> Will you go under or over? <laughs> we 
Finish your wraps. So take a look at just how um, how sheer the actual cliffs are in this area, um, and there's the train right there. That's an 11 car train. It's been there since February of 1998. Um, it actually left South Fork Station with $500,000 worth of lumber, and for all you scavengers, sorry, it's already gone. <laughs> um, but you can see us actually uh, pulling up above the yard site, and then we're going to land here in just a second. Uh, full disclosure, I was not the pilot. I know that you are not supposed to go under bridges. The other thing I can say is that the helicopter no longer exists, and the pilot doesn't fly anymore, so um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, it was not my choice to go under, and it was definitely not my choice to be ripping through the canyon at the speed that the boulders probably did during the 64 flood. Um, a few things, when we were over here we found a 1990s era Gatorade bottle, it was made of glass, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, some of this yard trackage is still in amazing shape, you can still see where the rust had been rubbed away from the, uh, the rails for, by the, the actual rail cars. Um, it's much more arid down there than it is up in Humboldt County. Where I live, when I, when I look at the tracks, they're mostly covered in moss and all sorts of um, vegetation. It's a little bit different down here. It's much more dry. Okay, enough of that. And back over here. Okay, so I just want to zoom out really quick. Um, this gives you an idea of the geology or the geography of the middle fork of the eel. It is incredibly rugged. Um, the fact that they even decided to put a railroad in this uh, section of earth is amazing to me. And they did actually map out a few different other routes. They thought about rerouting at one point, but decided that it wasn't reasonable. Um, now, I would say it is definitely nowhere. You go there and you're not going to see many other people in Island Mountain. Um, here we are in this area, and that's the actual bend in the river. So. This is the actual portal. Um, this is as you are heading into the tunnel, and you can see there's some cracks in the concrete happening. <coughs> this is a very, very early picture of Island Mountain. This is the original bridge. This was taken roughly around uh, the time of construction. I believe this was probably taken around 1913. The railroad was actually opened in 1914. Um, here's another uh, picture of the site. Um, you can see it's just a, it's a really formidable, amazing spot in the railroad. Um, I could just imagine going northbound and actually entering that uh, tunnel right there. Uh, this is 1964. This is actually, uh, if you know the date, September 1964. This is right before the flood happens. And everything I've read, they said the NWP was never in better shape than it was the summer before 1964. And a little bit of foreshadowing. There are roll-up fire doors on the portal. Now, not later. This is in the. Uh, this is roughly 1989, I believe. This is uh, during the Eureka Southern era. You can see the bright orange and yellow GP38s uh, sticking out of the tunnel. This is a picture from um, North Coast Journal. Uh, from what I understand, this is actually the old Island Mountain School. Um, they rolled it over into the side of the river. Um, it was a rail car, and it was also a school at one point. So, um, why did Island Mountain spell the end? So, in 1978, the tunnel was closed for longer than a year. Uh, Fifteen months, to be exact. Um, and I believe that this was the event that spelled the end of the profitable operation of NWP. And I think that it was really sort of like the beginning of the slippery slope which led to the ultimate permanent shutdown in February of 1998. So, I do want to talk a little bit about the history of the NWP, just so that we have some context. Um, here's the um, Scotia Bluffs. If you live in Rio Del or Scotia, you should be familiar with this uh, piece of geography and this absolutely amazing piece of trackage. Um, this was uh, during the passenger era. Um, here's one of the uh, ten wheelers pulling a passenger train, what they would call railroad. Um, that would be railroad east. Um, they had different conventions, so this would be southbound. Um, 
Here's a map of the actual NWP network. Um, it's really hard for us to realize now that NWP used to have such an amazing network of trackage. They had inner urban cars in the North Bay. It ran all the way up to Willits, where it connected with the CWR, the Scott Train, uh, which we are going to be rail biking on tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. Um, we are also, uh, you can see that it enters the canyon uh, past Willits, and it goes all the way through until it pops out um, of the Eel River Canyon at Scotia. And a lot of people don't realize this, but at one point, uh, the NWP actually went all the way to Trinidad. Um, and if you look on, say, like a, a Google Maps of uh, Field Brook, you can see there's uh, the old railroad grade, is what they call the road. Um, it used to go all the way up to Trinidad. Um, here's Eureka. Uh, some of you might be familiar with what they call the balloon track. Um, I prefer the term track, not tracked, because it literally was a balloon track where they would uh, turn entire trains around. Uh, you can see the turntable, which is still there. Um, it's one of the only pieces of infrastructure at the balloon track that didn't get removed. 